economic decline are not for once what we are opening the show with tonight. No, we have genuinely good news. And here it is. It looks possible that Elon Musk will seize control of Twitter and end censorship on that platform. Awesome. How much do you care about that? It's like a tech story, right? Who cares about social media? Here's what you should care Changes about. everything. Because if that were to happen, we could see a return of free speech to the United States. Absolutely. And should give you more hope than that possibility. Absolutely. A free Twitter Bless him, Father. A debate about ideas on the single most important incubator of elite opinion in the world. It would mean a return to free and fair elections in the United States. Absolutely. A in which both sides are allowed to make their case to the public, and then the public can decide. It's called democracy. You should be like that. And above all, a free Twitter would mean a direct challenge to the people in charge of our country's institutions, many of whom are incompetent. Exactly. For the first time in years, we'll be able to talk honestly about our leaders. Exactly. We'll the kind of conversations that make democracy. <coughs> exactly. Conversations, you know? And there's a reason for it. The point of censorship is never to shield the weak, no matter what Barack Obama may tell you. The point of censorship, always and everywhere, is to protect entrenched power. Exactly. That's why, it's powerful who imposed That's why they hid the Hunter Biden America. laptop exactly. story, exactly. Joe Biden's ties so to China, That's their main concern. Ukraine, the money going That's to the Biden right. family. Somehow, the right does not seem to understand this election. Definitely understand. Oh, they understand that they're bought and paid off just by the tech companies. If the Democratic Party's donor base ever lost control of an influential social media platform, they're done. And a bigger question on everyone's mind now Will Musk's newfound Twitter power mean Trump will be back on the platform? I hope so. I hope so. Why shouldn't he be back? You got the Ayatollah of Iran on there. Talks about killing Americans and they let him stay on there. That shows you what that's all about. In public. And in some ways, she's right. Shattering its monopoly on speech could break the Democrats. It will. Even an MSNBC anchor understands that. Why are they so determined to keep you from talking? Because they know you're talking is the threat. It's the, the truth. Allowing the free exchange of ideas in America's public square is far more important than any single election result. Absolutely. And if you don't believe it, consider what we've just seen over the past two years. You can elect Donald Trump if you want. Go ahead and do it. But the Democratic Party can still silence Donald Trump at will. Exactly. So what does that tell you? Who's more powerful, voters or the social media companies that control what voters know? Exactly. It's not even close. Republicans in Congress pretend not to understand this. Maybe they really are that stupid possible. Doesn't matter because either way they will never. They're bought and paid for. They've had a chance. They passed. Exactly. Even Jack Dorsey, who created Twitter, could not end censorship on Twitter, and so in the end, Jack Dorsey fled his own company when it became a Frankenstein monster that made America more hierarchical rather than less. A company that served the powerful at the expense of everyone else. That was the opposite of the intended effect. But he just left. He had no choice. Well, good for him that he's not as bad a man as I thought. And the entire technology industry appears to understand what exactly is happening here. Here's Musk in 2018, appearing on 60 Minutes, acknowledging that in a world of corporate media, Twitter can act as an equalizer. Watch. You tweet a lot. I, I use my tweets to express myself. <laughs> Some people use their hair. I use Twitter. Well, but you use your tweeting to, to kind of get back at critics. You, have, you kind of have little wars with the press. Twitter's a war zone. If somebody's going to jump in the war zone, it's like, okay, you're in the arena. Let's go. Yeah, that's right, man. Okay. Who does that sound like? You can dish it out. You can take I it. I don't know. Who does it sound like? It sounds like a guy who lives at the White House. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Oh. He's very good at Twitter. Twitter Absolutely. Exactly. Twitter is no longer a war zone. No, it's one-sided. Exactly. It's been banned. Twitter, despite the fact he may run in the next presidential race. He's an active politician with millions of people who would support him. He's been banned. Charlie Kirk had a huge following on Twitter. He's been suspended too. So is the Babylon Bee. And for that matter, this show has been suspended. Questioning a prevailing storyline is the crime. Do that and you're gone. It doesn't matter if you're factually right. We were factually right. It doesn't matter. Challenge power and you are censored instantly. Yep. Now it's hard to believe that the world's richest man is the only person who could fix this. You'd like to think our democratic systems could fix it, but clearly they can't. 
So Elon Musk seems to be our last hope. Good for him. Father, bless him, please, Father. I pray he takes it over. It's really more than an investment. It doesn't need the money. Last week, after Musk became Twitter's single biggest shareholder, Twitter's management announced that he would join their board of directors. The seat would come with two major restrictions. First, Musk would be barred from owning more than 15% of Twitter stock. He would not be allowed to control the company. Second, as a board member, Elon Musk would have a fiduciary duty to shareholders. In real terms, that he didn't he take not it. reveal Twitter's algorithms. He couldn't tell the public what they are. Those algorithms are used to censor and suppress effective critics of the Biden administration. Exactly. Without their knowledge, it's done in secret. You can't fight back. You don't even know what's happening. Yeah. So oh, I know what's happening. To the board seat. But this weekend, Musk abruptly pulled out of the deal. And that means he's free to buy more shares of Twitter. Good for him. They tried to control him. He's like, you can't control me. Twitter employees to brace for Musk's attempt at a hostile takeover. He also strongly implied that Twitter will not submit unless forced. Quote, there will be distractions ahead, but our goals and priorities remain unchanged. So you have to ask yourself, how exactly would Twitter, which is a public company, fight off a hostile takeover from the richest guy in the world? That's a and good question. The strategy to keep Elon Musk at bay. Exactly. First, Twitter is enlisting the help of corporate media. Now, corporate media stands to lose at least as much as the Democratic Party will lose if yep. Twitter is liberated. That's right. The competition is terrible for the mediocre and the illegitimate. Exactly. The NBC understands this intuitively, even the Americans who read the scripts on the air. And so they were the first to answer the call. What did they do? You know exactly what they did. They, they went him. after him. They called Elon Musk a racist. There you go. See what I mean? It <laughs> just never stops, huh? Anybody that watches this stuff has, has got to be just brainless. documentedly racist company that perhaps reminds him, gives him nostalgic memories of apartheid South Africa where he Do you see why nobody watches them? Everything. It don't matter what it is comes down to race. Cruel, dangerous. MSNBC, CNN, ABC, NBC, they're all the same. <laughs> see, it's a joke. We can, we can pour you with a rebuttal to the ludicrous. Tucker's got more of an audience on Fox News than all of them put together. For a reason. He's a racist, ignore him. Exactly. But at the Washington Post, they served up something slightly different, a little more stealthy. They enlisted the former CEO of Reddit, an activist mediocrity called Ellie Powell, who couldn't manage to actually run Reddit, to write an op-ed with this title, quote, Elon Musk's vision of free speech will be bad for Twitter. Oh, sh can you? Oh, my God. So At least their true colors are showing. As it does commit murder against the entire concept they're trying to support. But here's what it is, quote, Musk's appointment to Twitter's board shows that we need regulation of social media platforms to prevent rich people from controlling our channels. Oh, oh, now, my God. In the Washington Post, the paper that apparently, unbeknownst to the editors who work there, is owned by billionaire oligarch Jeff Bezos, retailer, and used as his personal platform to lobby the federal government. Exactly. Remember that the Washington Post, so Bezos, Bezos owns it. Bezos can own the only news gathering operation in your nation's capital and use it for to have a rich man. Yeah, he's the only rich the man to do it. See the hypocrisy, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and if you think that's hilarious, in the Guardian, it was written by former Labor Secretary Robert Reich, oh. who stopped quote, Elon Musk's vision for the internet is dangerous nonsense. In the subhead, sub quote, quote, Musk has long advocated for a libertarian vision of an uncontrolled internet. That's also the dream of every dictator strongman. That's how it was supposed to be when it was set up. And all they did was use it to take everybody's information, names, addresses, pictures for their face recognition and their AI. And then they just shut the faucets off. One side. Imagine the Robert Reich of, say, 1970, when he was a little college advocate, would be a little bit surprised to see the Robert Reich of nearly 80 calling for a total crackdown on the opinions of ordinary people. But, you know... People get power and change. That doesn't make any That's sense. That's for sure. And see why they stick to calling Elon Musk a racist on cable news. 
is stick this thing on scrap. And that's what they're doing at CNN. Of course, why? I think in some ways it's a good thing that Elon is out there tweeting, livening up Twitter, making it more entertaining. As Kara said, he's a funny guy. Mm. But there are serious questions behind that. What, what happens next? Does he push for a full acquisition? We don't know. Yeah, I pray, he, I pray he does. But some of the memes he posts on Twitter, anti-trans memes, anti-COVID vaccine memes, just, there's a reason to be serious. Listen, you bald-headed fart yeah, from him. Crunch him! Wear your mask, stick the, stick it in your neck. That propaganda strategy will not win open minds to the side of censorship. In fact, it's impossible to win open minds to the side of censorship because the idea is repugnant to any free spirit. Absolutely. So there's other tools that Twitter's going to have to use to stop a hostile takeover on behalf of free speech. So, for example, it's virtually certain that Twitter is on the phone now with corporate lawyers in New York finding ways to use what's known as a poison pill strategy to minimize Elon Musk's ownership stake as much as it possibly can. One option, and this would be really interesting, is to give Twitter shareholders the ability to buy many more shares at a discount to dilute Musk's control over the company. But that strategy is not guaranteed to work. Musk himself has a ton of options aside from buying all the shares. Himself. For example, you might think of this. Elon Musk could enlist the public, the pro-free speech public, in his hostile takeover of Twitter. Exactly, so we'll put our money in. Censorship could buy Twitter stock and then pledge his or her proxy votes to Elon Musk. And that would be- Oh, we, and he would get the company, it. And the company would be free. That would also be the single most revolutionary event ever to take place. Oh, that would be so country. awesome. That would be, be so awesome. It might work, we will try it. Derek Dean has thought a lot about what Elon Musk